Hello there, and uh, welcome to some Premier League predictions this time. And, uh, well, season's kind of almost here. It's about a month until the start of the Championship, so keep on the lookout. The next vlog will be, uh, I will be vlogging a couple of friendlies, but only two of them. So they're the only ones I'm able to actually attend. So, um, hmm. cry, cry, cry. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get into these Premier League predictions. And we'll, we'll, obviously we'll start with the bottom three. The bottom three will be Brighton in 20th, Norwich in 19th, and Southampton in 18th. Right, so talk about Brighton. Right, in their first season in the Premier League, they were good. They stayed up very safely, uh, and they did a good job. In the second season, however, uh, they got a bit lucky from the three relegated teams being, well, two of them being really bad, and, well, the referees screwing Cardiff over. I don't think this will be as kind to them, and they will go down. Norwich, uh, well... As good as their attack might be, their defence is just too weak to stay up. It's as simple as that. And with the owner saying that they're only going to be able to have a £20 million budget, and the fact that they've made a £6 million bid for Robbo, apparently, which is no way would accept that whatever we would want for Robbo, they will not be able to afford, because there's no way they will put most of their money into a player unproven in the Premier League. They would want to get a few for 20 million and due to their low budget and the fact that let's be honest they've not got the best defense this it showed in the championship especially against us as well where we smashed them uh, yeah uh, they're going to concede a lot of goals they might score a lot but they'll concede too many and they'll just go down but they'll go down playing attacking football which i don't know i do commend uh 18th i've got eight Obviously, I had Southampton. Uh, they've been flirting with the relegation for a few for a couple of years now. Um, finished seventeenth, and then last season, I'm not sure where they finished. I forget now, but they were kind of terrible at times. They just get these random jammy, lucky wins all the time. And um, can they do it again? I don't know. I'm not going to rule them out. They can certainly stay up. They have. They have all the. They have a good enough team to stay up, but I don't know. I don't know about them. Maybe it is their time, and I would like them to go down. I would love an away day at Southampton. I think it'll be class. Anyway, and on to the 17th to 11th teams. Right, so 17th to 11th teams, I'll do one at a time for this time because it's Quite a, few, quite a lot of teams. If it was just three teams at a time, then maybe I'd just do them all. But one team at a time. Uh, 17th, just surviving, maybe. Could st still definitely go down, because the squad isn't exactly the strongest. But I've got Sheffield United, the Blades. They're in the Premier League for the first time in many, many years. I don't know when the last time was that they were actually in there. But it was oh, about a decade or a bit. Or a bit over a decade ago. Something like that. Um, did they have a chance to stay up? Yes, they do. Um, they have a good attack. And they had a fairly solid defence in the championship as well. Uh, probably the best defensive team, in my opinion, that, that, that there was in the championship last season. And um, again, they do have a small budget like Norwich. They have a £20 million budget, just like Norwich, which could come back to haunt them. But they do ha did have a better, much better defence than Norwich, and I think they are definitely have more of a chance to stay up due to their good defence, and they will play attacking football. It's Chris Wilder. He, he's not going to like rest on the, anything. He's just going to play all of his... do his normal style that he was doing in the Championship and hope that works for him. It's the way he is, and he wants to score loads of goals because he supports Sheffield United, so I think that kind of helps. So, that's them. 
16th, I have Burnley. Mm, not too bad of a prediction. I don't think that would be. Um, they, mm, I feel like they might get off to a decent start. They'll be kind of a bit higher during the middle, and then during the end, they'll just kind of go off a little bit because they've already secured secured safety. So even though I've put them this low, I don't think they'll be in that much trouble. Um, although they don't really spend much money unless they decide to take the championship's best player again, which uh, I'm not. I don't know who, how the how did that work for them in the last couple of years? You know. Fifteenth, um, we've got Palace. Um, right, so Crystal Palace. They're always a bit of a peculiar team. Many a time they do start very badly. Even one time, finish. First seven games, lost all of them without scoring. And then then they came along against Chelsea in 1-T1, which is just great, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Um, so sometimes they start badly like that. Sometimes they start fairly decently. Um, this season, I think it'll just be a bit of an average season. They won't have too much troubles in terms of relegation. They might fear it at some point in the season they definitely will fear it but I don't think they'll go down I think they're too good to go down even if they were to lose Zaha which hmm, they put over 1 million 100 million pound price tag and to be honest I don't see him going with that price tag on him because nobody is going to pay that unless they are really really desperate and look and do a panic buy um, so I don't think they'll lose Zaha purely because nobody's going to pay 100 million for him. Not a chance. And the fact that he has failed at a big club before, that being United, and then he just went back to Palace. And yeah, um, and yeah, so Palace in 15th. 14th have Bournemouth, they're always just fairly comfortably safe. And Eddie Howe has got them into a stable, stable state in the Premier League, and well, it's probably going to be like like this again next season for them. Fairly stable in the Premier League, they'll just stay up uh, quite comfortably. They won't have too many problems, and they'll be fine. Thirteenth half Aston Villa, um, probably the strongest promoted team that I could that I would think. Despite being the one that went through the playoffs, they are the strongest team all round because they have strengths all round. Although their main attacking threat, T Tammy Abraham, was on loan and isn't going to be at Villa next season, thinking maybe Chelsea might give him a chance. Hope, th hope, hope they do, because he's English and I would like him to play for the uh, national team at some point and start banging in them goals for the for the for the three lines, you know. Um, John McGinn's a very good sentiment central midfielder along with uh, Jack Grealish they'll be very important for him uh, mm. they do have a fairly good squad on paper they have signed a forward called Wesley he scored I think 14 goals in there in his in the Belgian league last season I'm not sure if that's something to uh, judge him by, I don't know the quality of the Belgian league, it's obviously nowhere near the Premier League stand standards um, he might he has potential so he could very well develop and improve at Villa this season so he could bang in a fair few goals like, I don't know, like 14 again, which would be very much of a, of a help for them um, they got El Ghazi on a permanent deal, who did very well for them in the Championship, well most of the time, anyway. He always put a good shift in. That's the important thing for Villa. So, I think they have a fairly strong team. The only concern is that they may have a bit of a leaky defence. But when they got Tyrone Mings in their defence on loan last season, then it got a lot stronger. Um, so, I'm not sure on a, about if he's back there. But if he is back there then this should be okay. And they won't be in too much trouble. I think they've got a good enough squad to stay up. Um, 12th, I have Everton. Mm, don't really see much for them. They 
keep spending money, money and money. I they spend loads and it doesn't really work out for them. So I think... I, I just don't know. No matter how much they do, they just don't seem to do that well. And, well, I think it's more of the same. They're going to struggle. Sorry, Everton fans. It's just the way it is. And then 11th, I've got West Ham. Um, they are another team that makes a fair few signings and spends a bit of money. Last season, they spent loads of money. Uh, while it, they had a bad start, although they did ev things eventually did click together. But with Arnautovic leaving, well, I don't know if he's actually left, but he's probably going to leave. West Ham are probably going to get rid of him because during January time, he was thinking about leaving and then he made a U-turn and decided not to. And then when he did that, he just the form that he had previous to that just went out of the window and it became absolutely dreadful. So they're probably going to sell him, I should think. And whoever replaces him, you can you can never really guarantee they're going to do a job. Look, luckily, a couple of their signings have done decent from last season. Obviously, Felipe Anderson. I mean, he's a bit been a bit underrated last season. Not much recognition has been given to him as much as he would deserve because he is a good player. Stats don't really do him justice because, well, let's be honest, it's West Ham and they're not that good. <laughs> and they are, they have a decent manager who, well. I say decent, he's won the Premier League, so he is pretty good. Um, oh, and he's bought Ronaldo for Real Madrid. You know, just saying. For Real Madrid, that was. Uh, yeah, he's a good manager, Pellegrini. But, and now on to the 10th um, to 7th teams. And now, here are the 10th to the 7th teams going one by one yet again. Um, I'm going to go for in 10th, Newcastle um, well it's a bit tough for predicting Newcastle because it depends if this takeover does actually go through if it goes through they might finish higher if it do doesn't go through they might finish lower so I'm just kind of putting 2 and 2 together and getting an average and just putting them in, in the middle of where they would finish they got the takeover. I think maybe they'd get like break, possibly break into the top six, gain sixth place or seventh. But if they didn't get the takeover, maybe they dropped all the way down to fifteenth. Who knows? I'm just gonna get the average, fairly bit of average, and maybe a tenth. I know Newcastle fans would definitely be happy with tenth. Um, but Rafa has left, which could be a massive massive issue because he is a brilliant manager let's be honest he's got great pedigree he's won the champions league <laughs> what else can you say to that uh he's won so many things around the globe around europe he's a brilliant manager and is a big loss to them and it will hurt them next season unless they get sh they're shit sorted basically Get a new owner, get Ashley out, because he's hurting the club by just not spending any money at all. It's like, yeah, I get you want to stick to a budget, but you don't need to be so tight that you actually make a transfer profit every season. Like, come on. There's no real need for that. It's not like you're exactly running out of money. Some clubs are having to do... A couple of the promoter clubs are having to restrict themselves because they don't have quite as much money, especially Norwich, how, with how close they were to administration before. You know, they don't want to do that again. So they've restricted themselves, and that's understandable because they don't have as much money. However, Newcastle aren't exactly a poor, poor team. They have a lot of money, and have made profits from their transfers. Which, you know, so they will need to just have the new owner come in and just start not exactly splashing the cash, but making it a more stable club and 
being more willing to actually spend the money to get the players that they really need to make their team work. Oh God, I've gone on about Newcastle for three minutes, but they are a bit of a peculiar team. And to be honest, I really hope it works out for them in the end. Um, right, ninth, I have Leicester. Um, it's similar season to last season, except Brendan Rodgers won't get sacked like Claude Puel did which I think was very harsh because he was not actually doing that bad. He'd beaten Man City and Chelsea, two top, top teams. He'd beaten two of them. Like, he beat Chelsea in their own ground, which not many teams do that per se, kind of. But, well, I say not many teams. Some teams have. and uh, But they are a top six team and they're very much always up there. So it's they're not an easy team to beat by any stretch. Um, eighth, I have Arsenal. They are one team that I think is just going to slip away because, quite simply, I see no hope for them. Um, it's been happening for a few seasons now and we've discovered that it's not the manager's fault. It wasn't Wenger's fault. And... With the fa- fans and people thinking it was Wenger's fault, he, that's what probably why he decided to leave. Although I think maybe he wanted a new challenge, possibly, or just a break. I don't know what he's going to do next, but, you know, it's up to him. But it's obviously wasn't him and his football. It was the owner not willing to spend money and they've only got a budget of 45 million, and they're a team that's supposed to be going for the Champions League qualification, and they're only having a budget of 45 million. Come on, this is 2019 Kronke, like whatever your fucking stupid name is. Not like 2006. 45 million like 13 years ago would be brilliant, but in 2019, it's nothing. It can... It can barely even get you a decent player in the Premier League. You know, it can, it can definitely get you a good player, but it can't get you much. It can only get you one player, just one. It can't even get them Wilfred Zaha, a player that they want. And he's and when he was last at a big club, he fucked it up. Although it probably wasn't really that much of his fault. But he was kind of a bit younger and... Less mature. He's a lot more mature now, so I think he's definitely ready for a big club. And he will get success if he moves. But away from that, back to Arsenal. I just... I don't see the future being bright for them, especially if they don't change ownership. The the only thing that can save Arsenal from just go... Just... Going down, based going like getting worse and worse and worse, and just depreciating and decreasing in their qualities is a change of ownership. That's something that has to happen, just like Newcastle. Otherwise, they'll start to get into big trouble. I won't even be surprised if it ends up actually getting them relegated at some point. Which, I mean, that's a bit of a far call. I don't think that'll happen in the next few years, but it could happen in the next, say, 10, 20 years. If Stan Kroenke is still there, if he isn't, then obviously they'll be able to progress like they need to. So, and then, anyway, that's enough about Arsenal. Next, seventh, I have Watford. Had a good season last season. Probably did a lot better than a lot of people thought. A lot of people did have them near the bottom. I myself did actually have them to get relegated because uh, a few times where they just, well, did a Watford basically, had a good start and then fucked it up in the second half of the season. Even one season, losing their final 10 games of the season, I think it was something ridiculous like that. And they're finishing on 17th, like two points from 18th, you know. It was a bit mental for them. But last season, they didn't actually do a Watford. They actually did good. And it was a good season for them. And they played decent football. They don't spend the most money, 
but they do good business because they spend it on the right players. They they must have a top scouting team and a top training team as well to improve the players that they've already got. So I'm looking forward to see what they can do in the next season because they always seem to do quite well out of all the players that they actually get. Well, as far as I've seen from last season, that's what they managed to do. And Gio Lefeo has come out of his skin and has actually found some consistency in that Watford side. He's finally found a team and a style of play where he can play consistently well in the Premier League. And he's starting to adapt. So, yeah, he could even get even better and get into the possibly get into the team of the season. Who knows? But uh, I'm looking forward to the season for Watford. I think it'll be quite a good one for them. And then we'll be getting into the top six. And now the top six, the mighty, the, I don't know, the top six basically. And these are the teams that may have a good season or bad season, depending on how they think of it. Because those top six teams that don't reach the top four might think it's a bad season. But those top six teams that aren't usually in the top six will obviously think it's a very good season for them. You know? And you probably already know what team I've predicted to to break into the top six. And I'll come to them when I get to them. But sixth place, I have Chelsea. Uh, transfer ban. Currently managerless. Possibly getting in Frank Lampard from Derby. Uh, I'm not sure it's a good move for him. I think it's too early in his career, in his managerial career. He's had one season in manager, man, in managerial, in the managerial sense, and he got Derby to where they finished the previous season anyway, where they always get to sixth in the championship, and then losing in the playoffs. He lost in a playoff final, beating Leeds to be fair for getting the playoff semi final, coming that massive comeback. And that was funny. I did laugh. <laughs> although I wouldn't although I would have preferred Leeds to go up because of how expensive their away days are. Their away ends are thirty nine pounds for an hour or thirty nine seven thirty seven pounds for an hour. It's a bit fucking ridiculous, isn't it? Piss off Leeds. <laughs> but enough about them. But yeah, Chelsea sixth. Mm, transfer ban. Obviously. Now obviously Despite a transfer ban, they were allowed to get Kovacic in because they technically agreed a deal last season. It was a loan with an option to buy at the end of the loan, I think it was. So they were allowed to do that. They were allowed to do that with Higuain, but they chose not to. Because, well, he was crap for them. He was absolutely shite. So they didn't decide not to take up the option of having him. Um, obviously, Hazard has left them for... 88 million, I think it was, plus add ons which could reach up into the hundreds of millions. <sighs> Probably the add ons would be about, I don't know, I don't know what the add ons are, but I think it would be something to do with winning the Champions League, winning the La Liga, winning the Spanish Cup, you know, if like extra 30 million if Real Madrid win the treble or something. I don't know, maybe, maybe something like that. Or an extra £10 million per trophy that they win next season. I don't know how they're going to do it, but possibly. Because I don't actually know the contract. Maybe when I play football manager I might find out. <laughs> um, fifth, I have Man United. Um, I'm not sure about Man United. They're not really spending money. And they're not really improving the area that they really, really need to improve. And that is their defence. I mean, you'd have thought maybe Bailly would have been good enough, but he's just... I don't know about him. He can be definitely be good, but he keeps getting injured. He's been, he has been injured, and he's been just kind of not in the team. And a bit shaky, maybe. So, Lindelof has gone better this, this last season. So, he could become good. But, it's just... Smalling and Phil, Chris Smalling and Phil Jones, like, come on. 
I mean, the relegated teams could have a field day against those two. Oh, man. They really, really need to bin those two off and get a new centre-back. And that owner needs to spend some money. If not, then they need a change of ownership. Otherwise, they're not going to win the league again. And I'm going to say that right now. Without a chain of own, change of ownership, they will not win the league again. They might win something like the FA Cup and the League Cup now and again. Maybe even the Europa League, like they have done. But the Premier League, they'll have to get a change of ownership before they win it. It's as simple as that. There is a reason Jose Mourinho decided that finishing second with this Man United team was his greatest achievement. Because most of those players are too far up their own fucking arse with their egos. Like, they just, they care more about money than the actual team. And they played shite on purpose to get Mourinho out, which is a bit ridiculous. And now they just, like, poor fucking Pogba, like, come on, he's so far up his own arse. He thinks he's the best player in the world, when really he's not. He's nowhere near. He doesn't have the consistency and the work ethic to be the best. He's got the ability. He just doesn't use it. He's just like a better version of Balotelli. Has all the ability, but doesn't use it on a consistent basis. And that's plenty of Man United players right now. They have lots of players with great ability that don't always use it. And they just need to start using it. And they need a new owner to fix things. Otherwise, it will forever be broken. Fourth... I have Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now, these are a team that have do have brilliant owners. They're not afraid to splash their cash. They've shown that. But they do it in a fairly clever way. They got... Obviously, Jimenez is a player they got on loan last season who did do fairly well for them. And I actually had him in my fantasy team from the start of the season. And I was quite lucky because, it, because I thought... Well, I thought Wolves were going to have a good season and I put him and in my fantasy team because I thought, why not? He might have a good season. And, it, well, he had a much better season than I thought he was. I didn't think he'd score as many goals and assist as many goals. But I think he's been involved in the Premier League. I think he's got 13 goals, something around seven assists maybe. So 20 goal involvements in the Premier League, which is very good for his first season in the Premier League considering he's never really hit dull figures, I don't think. That's probably, I think that's his most prolific season, his best ever season in terms of goals and assists ever for any of his teams. He's 27 now, but he's been a good good purchase from Wolves. So they've got him on a permanent now, and that has been good. Obviously, Jota's started to adapt in the Premier League. It started fairly tough for him, but then he just adapted with ease halfway through, and he's become very good for them, and he will only get better. Um, Ruben Neves, obviously we know how good he is. Um, I think it was it was a bit unlucky to maybe not reach a team of the season or get a team of the season card in FIFA because he was very good for them. He scored a couple of screamers here and there. I mean, he didn't really score that too many too many goals, but that's not the sort of player he is. He sort of helps in defence, helps in attack, and does all the passing and all that. Something like an Iniesta type player. Uh, well, a player that won't get too many too involved in the in terms of goals and assists, but is but without him the team will crumble. Which so he's probably their most important player in the way that they actually play, and he's been very good. So, and I think it'll be more of the same next season. And Wolves, obviously. When they make signings, they're never a bad signing unless it's Adama Traore. He's absolutely awful. All he can do is run <laughs> and dribble. He can take a man on and he can run past them. Crossing and shooting, you can forget it. But enough about him. Apart from him, Wolves do good business and they've got good players, especially with someone like Morgan Gibbs-White coming through their academy. I think it was. Yes, he's looking quite good. Third, I have Tottenham Hotspur. They're always up there. They're always in the top four. As That's just what Pochettino's done 
with the lack of funds, especially with last season, they didn't make a single signing throughout any of the two windows and still got there, got fourth place and into the Champions League final, which was very commendable, I would say. He's very underrated because he's not won a trophy with them. But let's be honest, with all the competition of good teams he has in England, it's very hard for him to win a trophy, especially when Spurs don't spend as much money as the rest of the top six. So it is very tough for them to win a trophy. But I think at some point with Pochettino, they will win a trophy if he stays there. Maybe next season they'll get something like the League Cup, which I think the Spurs fans would take. It's a trophy, but might not necessarily get a trophy this season, but they're just stabilising in the top four, which is, which I think is good enough for Spurs. Spurs fans would have taken that, I don't know, 10 years ago when they were just not great, although they had the odd season in the top four where they had the odd good season, but they just weren't there consistently. Now they are there consistently, and that's what they would have what, what they like, and that is good for them. So, I think within the next three years, they'll get managed to get a trophy. And then they'll start winning and winning and winning at some point. But maybe not this season. Maybe this season. Who knows? Now, the top two, it's always a tough one. Especially with the two teams. Obviously, it's the same top two as last season. Man City and Liverpool. But it's just which way have I put them? Which way around have I decided to put them? Um, because they are two magnificent teams, 97 and 98 points. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Like, they were just unreal. Liverpool only lost one game last season, but still didn't win the league. Just shows the strength of these two sides. Just shows it. Liverpool obviously winning the Champions League, which was massive for them. City obviously doing the domestic treble which was also massive for them because they haven't done that before, which is very commendable. I know people say about, oh, they had an easy run, but you can only beat what's put in front of you. It's as simple as that. If you get drawn against an easy team, well, it's it's not their fault that they got drawn against an easy team. It's the people that draw it. They drew the teams. They have to play it. Simple as that. It's not their fault. You can only beat what's put in front of you. And that's what they did. And they did it easily. Yeah, they had an easy run in the FA Cup. Probably the easiest run I've seen a team have in the FA Cup. But they did it. You can't really say much about that. It was an odd season for some of the times. But into the top two. And let's just say the way around I've put them. And I'm going to have good reasons for this. I've put Man City second, and the reason for that, I personally think they will concentrate more on the Champions League, and they'll want to win that for the first time in their history. So, I think maybe they'll slip behind in the Premier League title race. They won't exactly slip away completely, they'll still be in the fight, but they won't come out on top this time because they'll want... they'll put everything into the Champions League. They'll want to win that for the first time ever. And then the following season, obviously, with the stuff that you can win afterwards with the Super Cup and the Club World Cup, they'll want that too. So it could be tough, but obviously they're going to get a lot of points, just like Liverpool as well. Um, They'll both get at least 93 points each. Again, something like that. Um, Maybe... Man City will end up getting 94 points even though set being second and Liverpool finishing first and I think in Liverpool finish first because they will concentrate on the league they haven't won it in 30 years and they will want to win it again so they're going to concentrate on the league and they're going to try and win it they'll slip behind in the Champions League possibly they might try and retain the Champions League who knows they also have the Club World Cup to play so and the Super Cup, so they do have some extra games which could hurt them in the terms of the Champions League. They may just want to concentrate on the Premier League and just win that for the first time in such a long, long time. And those are the reasons I've put that the two top two in that way because, quite simply, Liverpool need the Premier League and Man City, they need the Champions League. 
it's as simple as that for their history, to make more history between these two clubs. And to be honest, I see these two clubs being the dominant English clubs for quite some seasons now. Especially with Liverpool, they've now got good owners uh, and they've got a quality manager. Man City obviously have one of the best managers in the world. Probably some of the best owners in the world. You know, so it's going to be an intriguing season and it's going to be a good title race. And who knows, maybe Man City will end up, I don't know, getting the quadruple that they've so thought about so much. Maybe they will. Who knows? But it would be very tough because it's just far too many games to do so. Pep thinks it won't happen because it is too many games. And I do agree with that. It is too many games. It's a lot of games. But it is doable if you make the strong the strong squad even stronger and deeper with even more quality players that they already have. <laughs> so, who knows? It's an intriguing season. And I think it's going to be a good one. Sorry, it's been a bit long. I understand that. But it's going to end now. So... I've spent 15 minutes and six teams, jeez. Yeah, I'm going to stop rambling on about it now. I'm going to end the video and um, the next video pro possibly be the friendly way it filed. Um, I mean, I'll definitely be doing that one anyway. Um, if I ever do a video about that before then, I don't know. But if I do, it'll be up and, well... See you next time, boys. Goodbye.